I really need to shave my legs before the weekend. Does it make you feel fast? It does. Does it actually make a difference? Yes, it does. It's more aero, yeah, legit. Hello, so we are in Cardona, which is in Catalonia in Spain, for the Gravel F Series final, which is happening tomorrow. It's incredibly exciting. 179k with over 3,000 meters of climbing. So I think it might be quite a long day out. Where are we? Do you know where we are? No, <laughs> I just turn up at Heathrow and I land where I land. So it is raining the day before. This is the pool ring here in Cardona. But yeah, it's raining. Is it a pool? Ah, no. <laughs> We're in sunny Spain. We want to see the face of Mati. No. What do you think about this, this project? I think it's a really cool project. Like it's been really cool to ride like very different races in different parts of the world. To win the title is difficult, but it's possible. I don't think I've got a chance to win. La gente no lo sabe, pero hablas muy bien español. I'm a bit shy. Un gran totalmente diferente. No sé si es un gravel totalmente diferente, pero me parece bastante difícil. Sí, um, no me gustan mucho, muchas las subidas y por eso no sé si lo haré bien, pero intentaré. Para ver. Are you pressed? This is the most blandest dinner. Where is it? After six chapters and travel around the world, welcome everyone to Barcelona, welcome everyone to the village of Cardona. Only two minutes for the last dance of the year. Favor, las manos arriba. I want to see your hands on the sky. So the course started with like a four kilometer neutral section just because this section was quite technical but we didn't really have a vehicle controlling us or it was miles away in front but we just kind of went down this pretty safely i think everyone was quite aware that it was pretty techy and it wasn't worth taking a risk With a race that's 179 kilometers long with over 3,000 meters of climbing, it's pretty hard to pace yourself. So here I was trying to stay with the front girls, but I was also aware that I had a long way to go. So if anyone was surging, it really wasn't worth over pushing the kind of power I was doing. So we started five minutes behind the men's race, which meant we quite early on started catching men, which slightly did affect the race and I think it ended up affecting the final results as well but it's so difficult unless they ran the races completely separately to have them like non-interfering but yeah this section here I took a really bad line and just went into this really thick mud 
And I had this kind of throwback in my head from Unbound, just thinking, oh gosh, I've done it again. And I unclipped because I was in completely the wrong gear. This was completely my fault and such a silly error. And I realized I couldn't get back on because I was in the wrong gear. And I reacted really badly. Instead of just like getting off the bike properly, changing the gear and getting back on, I like basically tried to run up or like walk up. And I've lost so many positions here and just completely lost the front of the women's race. In the wrong gear. There was a little bit of swearing at that point as I realised that sort of in my head at that moment, I'm like, oh, my race is over. And then you just have to remember, look, it's 179k. It is a long day. My race is not over. Yes, I've lost the wheels that maybe I wanted to sit on for as long as I could or ride with for as long as I could. But all I'm going to have to do is just try and work my way forward carefully. And I think actually it was quite good for me because it meant I could pace myself from this point in the race, which was pretty early on. Okay, it's time for Swanee Cam. I am eight, nine, two to three hours early, as much as it's like Maddie's and Mikey's big day. It's also a big day for Swanee's. Um, and it takes a lot of preparation. For example, last night I was in bed half an hour, 45 minutes before the cyclists themselves, just because I knew how much today was gonna take out of me. Um, how much I needed to like have all my senses really sharp and like ready. So at this point I could see a group of girls ahead and I could see Amity was in it who was just one position above me in the overall series. So I was thinking I'll probably try and ride with her and also we're pretty friendly so I know that that's like someone I can ride with like safely firstly behind on the sense but also have a chit chat with from time to time. That is stunning. Woo! <laughs> you too, baby. <laughs> So Morgan got a puncture there and literally I could feel it hit my rim. So did I. I felt, I felt drip and I was like. One thing to say about this course in general is it was a true gravel course so like there was bits that were really quite rough and i think the gopro footage never quite does that justice but like this was proper gravel this wasn't a road race on gravel bikes on slightly off-road surface this was like some serious gravel so you can see people puncturing on the sides here and it does change the race dynamic and that's why i love gravel racing so much because there's so many different elements that come into it and you have to think more whilst you're dodging rocks and obstacles Swanee before yes um in Sweden I don't think Maddie was doing the YouTubes then so you this is the first time being introduced to me hello my name is Courtney um but then I had a friend called Kara who I'm really missing today actually because we had such a good time Swanee and we got into a lot of mischief <laughs> I was standing over there holding the bottle like this which reminds me I need to go practice
So this was just before the first feed and I was running low on water and Amity asked me, like, do you want to stop? And I just went, no, it's okay. If you, if you don't want to stop, we're like, we won't stop. And I was quite low on water. And here we went the wrong way. Sorry, this bit's quite important. We went the wrong way and overall added over a kilometre because we turned back and went back to where we went off course and then got back again. So we picked up three women um, because we went the wrong way and we stopped them going the wrong way. So by the time we turned back, they then joined us. This is the opportunity of a lifetime to show that I can swanny alone. It's a very serious sport, swannying. So I was low on water, but decided I'd play catch up later on. Maybe that didn't quite work. But anyways, these bits were quite enjoyable. So I might have sworn at how steep this was, and this is obviously a lot steeper than the GoPro is giving it justice. But when Mikey and I spoke about the race the next day, and I said, oh yeah, that descent, and he went, yeah, Matea knew it was coming, so we got off and walked. We all walked. And I was like, what do you mean you walked? Amity and I rode it. And he was like, no. So yeah, it turns out most people didn't ride that descent, but I just kind of followed Amity down it because I didn't want to lose her. And we did, I think the girls behind us must have walked it because we did drop them for a bit. Limber up. Just in case. Stretched. I'm ready. <laughs> Looks like nothing. Amity! You got this, you got this. Do you need loop? Move up your bike, I'll do all your water. Move up your bike, I'll do all your water. And then you need loop. Can you put the snacks in there? Yeah. Can you do this? I can only need loop. Because everyone's made of loop. And so I just need to do this. Can you do this? I can only need loop. Because everyone's made of loop. And so I assume you need loop. Do it again? I just. So you could only have outside assistance at Feed Zone 2, which is where Quartz was. And I got two new bottles, but I knew I was really dehydrated and I was kind of shouting at the feed, like, I need water, I need more water. But I decided to just go because Amity had gone and I could see Zav going as well. And I knew this next climb because I'd wrecked it the week before when in Girona. So I just kind of paced myself up the climb, went a bit harder and managed to kind of distance myself from most of the girls who I was with at that point. <laughs> So luckily for me, a guy came riding up next to me with a bead on of water and went, I think you need water. And I was like, yes, please. I did need water. And he said, I could see at the feed that you were like struggling and saying you needed water. So I got an extra bead on of water, which was incredible. But essentially I did the same thing that I always do and accidentally left my GoPro running. So the rest of the footage is missing, but this is towards the end. But what happened was I was pretty crampy basically surviving until the end. I knew I was just behind third place, so someone shouted at me just before the third feed, which was only 17k from the end, that I was like a, f like a minute off third. And I just didn't have anything left in me. My legs were, like, my quads were completely cramping up. You're doing amazing. I love you. Agua. You are amazing. You are unbelievable. You're a saint. You're a gift. Stop. I can you put water in I can't. I don't know if I can help. I don't know. So I rolled in in fifth, just two minutes off the podium for the race.
so the race is finished. Maddie Nutt did amazingly. She came fifth, and that means she came third overall. Uh, Mikey did amazing. He came top ten, which means he came fifth overall. Sixth. Sixth overall. We are now currently enjoying the view, and I'm doing my... Maddie, I'm doing my Swanee tape. Sorry. While it was a great race for everyone, everyone did amazingly. Mikey did amazingly. Maddie did amazingly. I also did fairly well, and I got awarded a medal for best support, best Swanee. So anyway, from me and my medal, I'd like to say it was a really tough and challenging day. I learned a lot, but it was really worth it. So we went into town and saw that there was some bull event going on, and I'm not sure how I personally feel about this, but they were playing a game where like they stood on hay bales, and it was like a big game of chicken as to who could be the last one standing. Makes sense why this is here. Recovery face masks. Grab Love Series is done for 2023. Almost definitely will be racing it in 2024. Huge shout out to Gerard and his team for like organizing it because it's been an amazing season and it's really helped me like develop as a rider. And it's been so much fun. Next stop is the Gravel World Championships. I'm gonna be racing the Elite Race for Great Britain. So I'm not gonna be in my rebel kit and I am getting a new bike, which is very exciting. Courtney, why do you swanny? That's a great question. Um, why do I swanny? I swanny because... It's <laughs> <laughs> a really good question, Mikey. Why because I love Maddie. Yeah, if I didn't know Maddie, I wouldn't be a swanny. Don't cuff me, officer. Guilty as charged. Like, it's not my day dream. It's like not the dream job. But. It's opened your eyes to a different world. It has. Left, and then you're finished, and we can go home, and we can cuddle, and we can watch a film, and we can do all these cute things. Yes, Mikey, you're a king! Love you! Don't show the nerves to your cyclists. They need to think that you are on top, you are on top form. Like, I have never swanied harder than I'm swanning right now, this day. I have never been more capable, more focused, more determined to swanee. And swanee I shall. I shall swanee the shit out of this race. For Maddie and Mikey. Look at the legs. Oh my god, why it's everywhere. So Look. Oh, I did scratch it. Oh. So yeah, it's funny. <laughs> that was a really big bite. Oh. oh.